What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Dan of All Good Things. Great to be able to talk with you today, man. Thanks for being here. Dude, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's so cool to have you here. So we do got a new single out uh, for The Glory, which features two of the members of Hollywood Undead. Awesome little uh, collaboration there. I mean, working with the folks in Hollywood Undead, I mean, I call them kind of like, uh, I've always called them newer metal, N-U-E-R, because they do have that <laughs> new metal effect to it with a lot of charm to it. Just uh, how was working with the folks in Hollywood Undead for this single? It was awesome, man. Uh, you know, I wish we could have done it like in person and done it like together in a studio or something like that. But because of quarantine, we had to kind of separate ourselves and do everything separate. So they recorded their spot in their own studio and sent it to us, kind of went back and forth a couple of times. And uh, same with the music video, kind of had to do it remotely, just green screen and uh, all masked up for coronavirus. But it was awesome, dude. Like when we first pitched for the glory to them, uh, Charlie and and Johnny Three Tears was super excited about it, and they kind of threw some ideas at us and just said they wanted to take the whole bridge. We didn't really even know what they were going to do, but they, they threw back the whole thing. It was finished, and they wrapped over, like, the whole guitar solo, which we didn't even expect, and kind of brought this cool new energy to it that we didn't expect. So, uh, yeah, we're stoked, man. I think they really took it to a new level and kind of brought the song some new life. It's not the newest song, so it's a, it's a three-year-old song, and, uh, yeah, they definitely brought it alive again. Yeah. Do you think, uh, like, even though that this is a song three years old, this was on the Machines album, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, so this at all doesn't maybe serve as, like, a, a clear representation of maybe the direction that All Good Things is going into, right? This is just a sort of, like, a one-off sort of scenario? Yeah, I mean, I would say that, like, lyrically, it kind of fits in with a lot of the stuff that we're doing, but, um, no, I mean, sound-wise, man, it's all over the place. Uh we've kind of always stuck with like the lyric concepts of kind of rise of the underdog and helping people get through like really bad situations or just kind of motivational music, I guess, in a way. So uh, lyrically we kind of gravitate to that, but uh, I think just the reason we wanted to do for the glory on the new record too, is just, it had its own legs and got so many streams and everything online that we kind of thought bringing in an artist with a similar, you know, fan base to come in and take the bridge would be awesome. And, you know, Hollywood and Dead was like top of the list. They wanted to do it. So we're, we're stoked to have them, man. It's been great. So what can we be expecting from new all good things? Because, you know, I do consider your music to be relatively experimental to have sort of like, you know, a lot of heavy metal parts, but having a lot of like hard rock parts. I could see all good things yeah. playing on liquid metal and I could see you guys playing on octane at the same time. So like, Thanks. what can we be expecting for the yeah. future of all good things? I think that's what's kind of cool about our band is we all come from so many different backgrounds and influences and stuff. That's why a lot of our songs will sound like a, almost a completely different band. I mean, in the beginning, we started out with multiple singers because maybe, you know, my voice might not work that great on like a ballad or, for example, or something like that. So with the new stuff, it's cool because we're pulling from Andrew and Liz have their own influences. And I grew up kind of similar to Miles. We all just kind of pull from so many different genres that uh, it kind of keeps each song sounding different. Um, you know, the whole record definitely doesn't sound like For the Glory. We definitely have a, a lot of stadium kind of big anthem -y hooks and stuff like that that uh, are scattered throughout the album. But, uh, yeah, I think it's all over the place. There's a lot of good flavors in there. And I, I know that all good things you guys were a lot of composing like music for like not just your own albums, but like composing music for other mediums such as games and movies and stuff. So yeah. from from reading about you guys, it almost seems like all good things was never intended to be like a rock band that's now going to be playing on Aftershock later this year. Right. This was all yeah. good things is almost kind of like a giant happy accident. Right. Yeah, you nailed it, man. Like it's that's exactly right. You know, we we at all done so many bands in our life and and at the time we're even pushing bands and trying to tour in different bands and this was just a fun studio project that you know we were just knocking out having fun writing rock stuff trying to get it licensed to film tv whatever games whatever it might be and then <clears throat> yeah one day liz and i got online and we're like hey we should just look at the play see if anyone's actually listened to this stuff and all good things had you know hundreds of thousands of views more than any other project we were kind of actively pushing and just kind of realized we should you know dedicate more time to it and we had more fun writing that stuff anyway. So it was like, why are we getting away from rock in the first place? So, I mean, it really is a blessing that we've all come back full circle and started writing the heavy stuff again. And, and yeah, like you said, man, without the fans reaching out and getting all these messages every day, telling us like, Hey, when are you guys playing? When's your album coming out? Like, when can I see you live? We never even thought about playing live. You know, a few years ago, obviously we changed our direction and decided this is what we need to do. But in the beginning, it was just a studio project, man, just having fun bashing out music that we'd like to make. So, uh, now we definitely take a lot more serious and we're really trying to like uh, polish it up and make it perfect. Back in the day, we were just throwing anything at the wall and just seeing what stuck and having fun with it. We're still having fun with it, but it's fun to take it more uh, a little more serious now. 
transitioning because you know i'm i have an unhealthy obsession with like movie and game soundtracks like i listen to that stuff just as much as i listen to rock and heavy metal so like oh yeah being like you know sort of like uh, a soundtrack or having like this sort of like soundtrack background did you almost feel like being a rock artist it it almost seems like a completely separate form of instrumentation or creativity or does it kind of tie things together in a way i mean in a way it's the same because i mean we have a funny way we, we write to where we, we like to write to like movies we'll put like an epic movie on the side of the screen while we're in the studio and you know if, if whatever we're working on kind of works in that scene it kind of generally will work for our demographic and our album and everything because we're always trying to get that visual stuff and that epic stuff and try to kind of make our music work with the visuals so uh that's always kind of been our our strategy there i think for me vocally it's like nothing's really changed it's just you know i grew up singing and screaming and stuff and i've always been a rock singer and then i ended up moving more into the pop world and a lot of you know co-writes and stuff like that but i think what we're almost comfortable with is just doing heavy rock and coming back to this and it might be a little sim- cinematic or crazy bombastic and weird at sometimes but it i think uh i don't know just it's not like i'm singing in different ways it's kind of like the voice almost is the thing that the glue that sticks all the weird sounding music together if that sounds right you know yeah um for example like our old stuff get up we, we were just getting weird with it and changing up tempos and just it was about trying to make every section different and syncable and unique and like kind of grab your ear and we're still kind of going for that but at the same time we're a rock band now we're not a licensing band so we're trying to craft a really good song so uh we've always been writing songs man so in the end we're, it's the same game it's the same I, game i'd imagine too if you're writing music to be licensed for like a game it is almost kind of like uh it is almost kind of like a commission sort of scenario where like or like like i'm an artist so like you know making my own work is very different from you know doing like an album cover commission or a merch yeah. commission or something like that so it's fair to say that like and i'm not to say that you know making licensed music wasn't creative at all it definitely is but with making stuff yeah, for all good things it is like more independent it is coming straight from you it almost seems like you don't have to like adjust to another vision or something like that uh, 100 right man i mean like writing for licensing is like the least sexy thing in music right people don't really look at licensing or library music and be like, oh my god it's amazing like it's generally not held on the same level as other artists and everything like that i just think we were lucky enough to write stuff without being given a ton of direction and just we put out our own collection and it ended up getting synced really well so we with all good things stuff it was never like you need to do this and sound like this and your songs need to be exactly this because this is what we're syncing it just ended up coming out that way and uh just i don't know just did really well and the coolest thing about it is we never know where it gets synced or where it's getting placed for it's not like we're writing for a specific commercial or, or game or anything like that it's just the song might work well for their ad campaign or whatever it might be so we really have no idea where it, it turns up until the statements come in until we get you know messages from fans or people that just heard it randomly on tv so uh i mean for us i guess it's not we're not really writing we never really were writing the song specifically for library it was always like hey this could be an album but this was our outlet this was like the way to get it out into the world and luckily i think we took that route which is kind of the opposite route where we went the licensing route instead of just getting in a van and trailer and slugging out club tours for a few years. Cause magically we've reached a lot more ears, I think doing it this way than we would have doing it the old DIY, yeah. you know, small hand tour stuff. So, and that's what I think makes all good things sort of stand out. Like, um, you know, being a rock band nowadays, like I don't consider it being part of like, you know, what we're hearing nowadays from like the dirty honeys or like the three days graces yeah. or the shine downs or something like that i think like you're kind of like your own rock band coming from a different route in a way and i think that's uh i think it speaks high to your technical excellence and i think it speaks it it, it is definitely sort of like a cool background story because how many times have we heard you know so and and not to discredit it by any stretch of the means they're great stories but how many times have we heard the rock stories yeah we got in a van played at some you know shitty diy club two of us got hepatitis from using the restroom and then like and then yeah. you know like so, you know play to <laughs> play to four people at this club for three years and now we're playing stadiums like i, I think totally. you know starting on the sort of soundtrack realm is unique and do you know how many people are discovering like i discovered a lot of my favorite bands through video games so yeah it's crazy man and bands like bring me are starting to collab with like the doom guy that wrote you know like it's it, the video games and music are they're, they're really colliding and it's it's a lot of fun to see how it's going down i mean um yeah yeah sorry i was gonna i was gonna go off on something else but uh yeah, yeah. yeah uh it, it's good dude like i think we i don't want to discredit us and say we haven't played to four people and slept on crappy floors and couches and stuff like that we definitely spent years and years of our lives doing the small club tours and stuff it's just we got so lucky with this band that 
you know, we were able to basically play two shows. We played a whiskey show. We played a show in Montana at a brewery. And then next thing you know, we ended up signing with an awesome team at Better Noise, trying to figure out how to take the music to the next level. And, you know, we were all geared up and ready to tour and everything. Coronavirus, you know, canceled all those plans and everything. Obviously, it didn't work out as planned. The, the album got pushed back. But, uh, you know, we're just so lucky to be in this position where we didn't have to slug it out on the road as long as we thought we needed to. And, uh, and we've got this many listeners and now we've got uh for the glory doing really well our album coming out and um yeah man we're just we're just excited to be where we're at it's pretty surreal honestly it's wild yeah and think about like how many times like music like from video games and stuff like uh, i don't know if you're familiar with the soundtrack uh, group two steps from hell uh but they write they uh, write like their own like real epic music that you would hear and then they also put out their own oh. albums so like it, it, it's oh, cool, cool how different forms of art could really influence how you create your work as well yeah, totally. And yeah, the, the video game soundtrack too, just playing all the time. Like, I don't know, I've been playing Rocket League like crazy too. It's funny how you like draw inspiration from that and how like certain songs are more electronic and you'll like, it'll fit that game like better than other ones. I don't know. We have had uh, uh, some luck in the gaming world, but I could see in the future too, just diving deeper down that and just trying to go crazy into the gaming music kind of world. So we'll see where the world takes us. We'll, we'll see what happens down the road. But uh, were, you ever one Sonic, album at a time. were you ever a Sonic the Hedgehog fan? Oh, dude, huge, bro. Yeah, I grew up playing that shit, yeah. Okay, think about how many great rock songs... Like, Julian K got huge because of that song. Uh, because of that song dude. he did for Sonic Heroes. Like, Gunnar Nelson put out a great song on Sonic. And, like, all those classic yeah. Sonic Adventure 2 songs. Like, uh, I'm leaving the city for the first time in uh, in uh, June after I get my second dose. And, like, I'm going to be playing that City Escape song. Like, it's... Dude. So, like... Uh there's some great rock world. You guys got to do a show at like an E3 convention or something like that. Dude, I got so lucky to go. I went to E3, like the last E3 before <clears throat> the virus. And man, that, that is so fun, dude. Just walking around like a little kid, just, just like playing a bunch of random video games and all the visuals. It is such a fun thing, man. We would love to play at E3. That's like the perfect uh, show for all good things. I think that'd be epic, man. Yeah. Also, what I'd love to do is put like an eight bit record out at some point, like, you know, In Flames put out, like, their record in 8-bit. I just have always loved that old-school video game stuff, and I think, you know, just tr it'd just be fun to, like, transition our music into that 8-bit world. I don't know. Yeah. That's something we always kind of talked about doing. We haven't done it yet, but maybe we'll get there at some point. You'll have to outdo Castlevania, and that has yet to be topped in the 8-bit. Yeah, that's the thing is there's a lot of there's a lot of good 8-bit stuff out there, so, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's a guy in Fiverr you can just find now that just takes your album and does that now. That, you know, that's, like so that, there's definitely some nerd out there who's making a shit ton of money doing that that's that's you know, a service waiting to happen big guy for sure man he, he's figured out a, a, a corner of that uh yeah he's probably making some money over there there's a genre but, called yeah. there's a genre called nintendo core if you look it up i mean but the, yeah but if you go on the wikipedia article you're only gonna find like two bands in that whole genre so i don't know if that even counts that's awesome it's kind of like our genre epic epic rock it's like not really a real genre but it's kind of become what people have labeled us as which is funny it's like when you google it you don't really know there's not really epic rock it's just kind of become our own thing if people ask us what, what is your band what do you guys sound like i don't know epic rock like, what is that and you got i don't know it's kind of an annoying answer more than anything it's funny it sounds it, it, to me it'll sound like you know guns and roses doing a do it with like a symphony orchestra like i, I would call november more Rain cinematic or yeah exactly more visual exactly well you get it, it didn't take long for you so yeah <laughs> um do you think because also like i feel like all good things has sort of like this semi like post-apocalyptic theme happening with your uh style so obviously like lyrics or concepts do determine the music itself as well right or have you always needed the music before lyrics even come into play um I would say no, but generally I'm a better writer when music comes first. Like I like to kind of hash out, most of the time we'll hash out stuff starting with a riff or like a cool sound even, you know, and maybe that sound will inspire a lyric, you know, it just depends. Like every song is different, but a lot of times I start with a cool sound or a verse or just even a chorus. A lot of times, like there's been a couple of songs on the, on the new album where we're just, we got an intro that's so massive and huge. And we're just like, how do we match the energy of this intro and you're just trying to keep it up there the whole time and that's kind of been the struggle with some of these huge huge anthemic songs where like we start out with such a bang like how do you keep the energy going the whole time so um yeah man i got a little distracted there but uh, a little off topic but uh yeah I, um sorry mm -hmm. go back to what you're asking no no just <laughs> talking about like the lyrical concepts of the music. oh lyric. yeah sorry um 
Yeah, totally. It's just song to song. Totally. I mean, it's not like there's like a theme throughout. We've kind of tried to stitch it all together with a really cool uh, artist we found in Canada. He's doing our album artwork. He did the For the Glory artwork. And kind of our concept with every song is to work with him to create like a scene in a city that we're building, basically. Like For the Glory is a dude climbing a skyscraper with a flag in his hand. And I can't really say a lot about the album artwork and everything, but you'll it'll eventually see like in the background each thing it kind of like ties this whole city together. So we're essentially trying to build like our own city and characters within it artistically. And that's something we could kind of build on later. Um, but yeah, as far as this album goes, man, I think song to song is just totally different. It's not all post-apocalyptic. It's not all you can make it through anything. You know, there's a lot of different uh, topics that we touch on. So uh, it, it's not like a concept record at all. But um, I think our visuals, we've always kind of lean towards that futuristic post-apocalyptic kind of world um is really we started out with gas mask imagery dude when we were a studio band we didn't want to take photos of ourselves we were like oh we're just putting the shit on the internet and let's just grab a stock image of three people in a gas mask and that'll be us for a while because we didn't we didn't think anyone wanted to see our faces we weren't going to be a real band so when we put that out it just oh dude we're the mask band so then we were like a slipknot kind of and it came to the point where we're like well do we do the mask thing forever do we unveil our faces and like you know we had this idea of when we did the machines music video was kind of like the shedding of the mask and showing that we're a real band and you know that's been three four years now but uh that was a huge debate with us man we we were a studio band we're like well i mean no one wants to see our faces dude we're just we're a mask band what's the point of coming out and trying to change the whole like look of the band everyone knows us as the gas mask you are the rock that was a huge you are the rock band that's ahead of its time. You were wearing masks and rock and roll before it was cool. So we've been saying, man, exactly. Corona came out and we were, we were like, we got this down, dude. We got this down. I was grocery shopping in a gas mask. It was good. Yeah, you should, you should, yeah, I mean, you should sue uh, COVID's publicist for uh, ripping, <laughs> ripping off the imagery. I know, it's good. And then everyone, like, we'd always wanted to come out with masks and, like, not just, like, the regular face mask, but, like, the gas mask and customize them. Like, oh, dude, sick. the fans could be wearing them. There's lights in them and shit. We'd, like, I don't know, we just started thinking all these ideas. And then Corona hit, and every single band in the world has a mask now. And most of them are customized and crazy and look like gas masks, too. So I think we missed the boat on that one. But that's all good. It's all good. We, we shed the mask at a good time, I guess. At least we didn't uh, keep it throughout Corona. Because if I shed it now, it'd be a little more awkward. Yeah, but just remember, bands, all good things did it first. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I guess Slipknot did it first, but, you know. Fair enough, but they did the whole thing. That's true. Theirs is a lot more elaborate and a little yeah. more creative than a... We just went to the store and bought some gas masks for a, for a few photos because we didn't want to show our faces. We thought we were too ugly to be a rock band, so it, it ended up working out, I think, so... Have you seen a, a band's photo shoot ever? <laughs> What's that say together? Have you, have you ever seen a band's photo shoot too ugly for rock and roll? Oh, dude, yeah. There's a lot of Photoshop that goes into rock and roll photo shoots, that's for sure. Yeah, I took <laughs> I took a graphic design course, and we were learning in college, and we were learning on how, like, they airbrush faces and stuff like that. It was so disturbing to see on how, oh, yeah. like, those magazines, like, it's it's like... Yeah, dude, I'm a big Photoshop guy, too, and, yeah, I mean... Not that I really doctor all my own stuff, but I know the the ins and outs of that world is crazy, dude. Yeah, that, that's wild. That, that clone stamp tool, man, it saves some people's it, lives. Clone stamp is the greatest tool in Photoshop. That's true, though. I mean, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I never got to have a discussion about Photoshop tools. It's normally guitar pedals, but uh... well, dude, that's the thing about being in a band now, man. It's like I'm a, I'm the singer and I do all I write the music with everybody, but it's also, dude, I got to do all the Photoshop and I got to do all the social media. You know, you're more of an influencer and a graphic designer than you are like a singer and musician. I feel like you know when I can't be touring and I'm sitting at home, it's like, well, I'll, I'll do it all. You know, so it's like I've always had to do the Photoshopping and the merch design and everything like that. So it's, it, it yeah. It's cool. I haven't chosen to do it, but it's it's fun. It's always fun to design a T-shirt when it comes out and people are wearing it. It's like another subtle thing that makes you stoked that you spend a little time doing it. But yeah. Yeah. Well, for every yeah, band we'll member you see on stage, there's always another talent that they have off stage as well. And I think that's one of the coolest things about being in a band. Yeah, man. Especially yeah, like I said, now, man, it's like you make it on TikTok almost easier than you make it on like uh, music platforms. It's funny how how uh, ADD everyone's become. I, I was just joking last night how, you know, we only had the attention span for MySpace and now we've kind of, I don't know, it was like people don't have the attention span for an album, then it went to EP and then it went to single and now you're down to Instagram and now people have like no attention span for a 15 second Instagram. It's gone down to seven or eight TikTok seconds. So it's it's funny, man. You got to grab people's attention somewhere or the other, but uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, as, as we're as we're living longer, our attention spans are shorter. Hundred percent, man. Yeah. yeah, and like even for me, dude, like I grew up listening to albums start to front, looking through the art, loving just owning it. And then, you know, now I just put my phone on shuffle, dude, because I'm so ADD. I just, my music is just bouncing all over. It's rare that I even listen to a full album anymore. Yeah. So I'm part of the problem. Yep. God damn it, dude. You, <laughs> yeah. But hey, we're, we're all guilty, all right? I've, I've downloaded shit on LimeWire before back in the day. You know, we, 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 we're, guilty we're, too, man. we're all sinners in rock and roll. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. Yeah. 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 I remember a couple of bands got busted for the LimeWire, I think, back in the day. I was such a nerd in high school. I was so obsessed with buying music. I would sneak into, I would go into Target and peel the stickers off of albums just to stick them on my dashboard. Just because I was so obsessed with like collecting music. I ended up getting busted by Target and not allowed in there for a little while because I was the guy peeling stickers off of the cover for my car for whatever stupid reason. I was in high school, but yeah, man. So that, it's funny. It's that, like that and a line where, well, I'm a crook. Yeah. I'm a musician and a crook. Wow. Damn, dude. <laughs> that, that. Very petty. Yeah, like a sticker like what was i doing i don't know just really wanted that like for the glory out now I'm just peel it and stick it on my dash hey maybe those things could be worth something one day in the future <laughs> that car's long gone it's been scrapped it's all, all right. good but all right destroy yeah, my evidence. trusty old ford taurus dude it was a nice a nice ride I'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> so uh before we go i want to thank you so much for your time and for a great conversation just uh is there anything else with all good things that you would like to promote i know you guys are scheduled for aftershock festival i'm hoping to make it out there this october but uh you know if this yeah, virus that shall not be named finally fucks off but uh is there anything exactly. else that you'd like to promote yeah i mean i wish i could say more right now we've got a ton of dates in the works right now it's just a matter of uh finalizing them so i would say you know our interview is a couple of days from now i could probably announce a few more shows but uh yeah just keep an eye on our socials uh, all good things rock we're going to be announcing hopefully a tour really soon uh, another festival date or two um and hopefully an album release we've got a few more singles in the works um some more music in the pipeline we're going to put out hopefully another video or two and then the album fingers crossed will be out later this year man um awesome. that's the big goal big end goal hopefully we'll be on the uh, on the road all fall and uh pushing the new record dude that's the goal we'll awesome see well thank you so much everybody all good things check out their collaboration for the glory featuring two members of hollywood undead this is alex from heavy new york and we will see you next time